so now we're on to task 5. In task 5 it's saying the head teacher wants to compare parent feedback between two years. So download the parent feedback data for both years and the school has set a target of 5% increase in strongly agree responses. It says use a function to, dis to display the words target met if this has been achieved or improvement required if this has not been achieved. Make sure all the data is clear, formatted correctly and fits on one page and then create a chart on a new worksheet that compares the strongly agree data for both years. And finally, we need to upload our spreadsheet. So it's given us a hint straight away because it's telling us to upload our spreadsheet. So we know we're going to have to use a spreadsheet. So to create a spreadsheet, we need to use Microsoft Excel. The first thing I'm going to do is just click on here. So once I click on here, I'll download the required file I need, which is a text file. If I just open that, you'll see I've got all my text in there. And the first thing we're going to need to do with that text file is import it into Excel. So I'm going to close that text file down, I'm going to minimise this window and I'm going to open Excel. So I'm going to click start, I'm going to go to Microsoft Excel. Now in Microsoft Excel, to import some data, we need to use the data tab. So if I look across the top, I can see the data tab and I'm going to select that. From there, I'm going to look in the group that's called Get External Data and I'm going to select the one that says From Text because as I said earlier, we downloaded a text file so it's going to be From Text. I'm going to click on that first. Once I've opened um, that button, I get a little window. I'm going to then find my desktop where I've saved that file and I saved it into my exam files and you can see in my exam files I've got this text file. So I'm going to click on here. Once I've selected that text file, I get the text import wizard. And this takes you through importing this text step by step. So first thing we need to look at is the original data type. So we need to choose the file type that best describes your data. And if you have a look down here, we can actually see the data we've got. Okay, so you can see each field of the data is split with a comma. And if I look back up here, it says delimited is characters such as commas or tabs separate each field. So if I look back down, I can see those commas. I know that's delimited, so I can click next. The next step of the wizard is selecting the delimiter we want to use. I know specifically we need to use comma, so I'm going to tick the comma button and click next. As you can see, when I've ticked the comma button, it's pushed all that data into separate columns. Finally, ask us if we want to change any data. I'm not going to do that for now. I'm just going to click Finish. Once we click Finish, it asks us what cell we want the data to be imported to. By default, it will put it into A1, and that's fine. We're going to press OK on that. And as you can see, from there, we've got uh, a spreadsheet of data now. And we need to use this data to find out um, what the headmaster's asked us to use. So we are told in the exam that the school has set a 5% increase in strongly agree responses. So there's a target for that 5% increase. And we need to use a function to display the words target met if this has been achieved or improvement required if this has not been achieved. So by, by asking us to um, use a function to display different words, depending on if something's been achieved or not. It's asking us to use something called the logical formula. And the logical formula we need to use is something called an if statement. So to do this, I'm going to go back to my Excel. I'm going to give a little heading here. So I'm just going to call the heading something like target met with a little question mark. And I'm going to use this first cell. So. I'm clicking in this cell here, which is G3, because that's where I want the answer to go. Okay. So once I've clicked in that cell, I'm going to go onto my formula um, formula toolbar at the top. You see this here, and I'm going to click on the FX button. 
this little FX button is insert function and what it will do it will open up this window here and let me start creating the function from here you can see um, from the list what my most recently used were and you can see if is there um, if the if statement wasn't in that list you would be able to search it in this toolbar here I'm going to select if though and then press OK the if statements split into three different areas and we're going to have to fill in those boxes with different information depending on, on which box we need so the first box is the logical test and it tells us that the logical test is any value or expression that can be evaluated to true or false so this is basically a true or false question that we're going to have to ask the computer so the question we're going to ask is whether the strongly agree responses for 2010 2009-2010 are 5% greater than the strongly agree responses for 2008 and 2009 so to do that first, first thing I'm going to do in my logical test is select the first strongly agree cell. So that's the one that corresponds over to the cell we're working in. And as we can see, that's 93. So I want to know if that is greater than, so I'm going to use the greater than symbol, we know it can be either greater than 5% or equal to 5%, so I'm also going to use the equal symbol. And it's greater than or equal to our previous score, which is this one here. So you'll see in B14. So I'm going to select that. Plus our 5%, which is just at the bottom here, which is our target improvement. So I'm going to select that as well. There's an important thing here, though, that we need to do before we continue, and that is we need to make this cell absolute. And we can do that by pressing F4 on our keyboards now, and it's going to put the dollar signs around. And this means when we drag down later to replicate this formula down the column, it's going to automatically lock this cell in pl place so this one doesn't move and it will always stay that 5%. And what I'm going to do then is just close the bracket there. So I'll just run through that again. We're using B3, which is this cell here, and we're finding out whether it's greater than or equal to this cell here plus a 5%. Okay? So we can tell here it's false, which is correct. We know that 93 isn't 5% greater than 91. So we know our formula is working. The next things we need to do is add what is going to be our yes or our no, or our true or our false. So if it's true, it's telling us we need to use the words target met. So all we need to do is type in target met in here. And if it's false, it's telling us that it's going to be improvement required. So we just have to type improvement required into there. Okay. What's nice now is at the bottom it tells us what the actual answer is going to be. So you can see there, formula result equals improvement required, which is what we want. because We know that isn't 5% greater than that one. So once we've done that, I'm going to select the cell I've just created that formula in and I'm going to use the little box in the bottom right hand corner of the cell. I'm going to click on it and I'm just going to drag that down. And what that will do is replicate that formula down and copy it down for each one of these survey questions. Okay, so once we've done that, we're going to read the next step of this. And it says make sure all the data is clear, formatted correctly, and fits on one page. So first of all, I'm going to make sure it's all clear. So I'm going to make sure this text fits in that cell by dragging that across. I'm also going to maybe change some fonts. So maybe I'm going to make certain cells bigger. 
and maybe make some title bold, depending on what I want to do. And then finally, I might just highlight my tables and put some grid lines around them. So that's the first thing. We've made sure everything's clear. The second thing is we need to make sure it's formatted correctly. So one thing we know here is these are all percentages. So I'm going to highlight all these and use the percentage icon, which is here in our number tool, in our number group on the home tab. So I'm going to click on that and you can see it's turned them all into percentages. So I'm going to do that for both sets. And now you can see all our percentages are in. OK. So the other thing it said to do here is to make sure it fits on one page. And the easiest way to make it fit on one page is by just going down the bottom here to the page break preview. Or if you do it on page layout, even view even, sorry, and go to page break preview. You can just drag the page break across. So instead of it being split into two pages, it then gets just pushed all onto one page. And then you can go back to your normal view and that will stay in place. So now the final thing we've got to do here is create a chart and that's going to go onto a new worksheet that compares the strongly agreed data for both years. The way I find this e easiest is to just create one series of data first and then add the second series afterwards. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create just a graph with one table, one piece of data on it. So I'm going to highlight all my survey questions and all my percentages and then I'm going to go up to insert and I'm just going to pick a bar chart or column chart. So I'm just going to click on that and select it. And you can see straight away I've got a chart title and I've got my chart. The only problem with this chart at the moment is that it's only got one series of data on it. So to change that, using the chart tools at the top and in design, we're going to click on the select data button. And in our select data source window, it actually shows us our legend entries and it actually shows us how many series we're using. So the first thing I want to do is edit the series I've got currently. So I'm going to click edit on that and I'm going to give it a name. And the name I'm going to give it, because I know it relates to the parent feedback of 2009-2010, I'm going to give it that name. So I can either type that in or easier, I can just click on where it says parent feedback 2009-2010 and click OK, and you can see that the series has got that name. And what I'm going to do then is add my second series. So again, the series name I'm going to select, which is going to be the parent feedback for 2008 and 2009. And then the series values, I'm just going to delete out there, and I'm going to highlight 2008-2009 strongly agree. Percentages, and click OK. And what you can see, once I've done that, straight away, I've been given a new bar in a different colour that relates to that 2008 to 2009 data. Now I'm going to press OK. So once I've pressed OK, the next thing I want to do is move this graph onto its own sheet. And again, to do that, using the chart tools and to get to the chart tools if you haven't got them on you just need to make sure you clicked on your chart and they'll appear at the top so we're going to click move chart and we're going to click on new sheet and click ok to that okay and from there we're just going to finally add a couple of different things so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go to format i'm going to go to design sorry um, and add chart element. The first thing I want to add is a legend so I can tell what the difference is between my blue and my orange bars. So I'm just going to put that at the bottom. 
and you can see it's just shown up there. I'm then also going to add a chart title and axis titles, both the horizontal and vertical axis. So I'm going to just click into those to edit them. I'm going to call this survey questions. I'm going to call this access title percentage. And I'm going to call the graph comparison of strongly So I'll put comparison of strongly agree answers from 2008 to 2009 and 2009 to 2010. The final thing you might want to do here is just click on each thing and you might want to make the fonts just a little bit easier to read by just making them slightly larger. And you can do that very easily by just using the arrows or using the points here. Once that's completed, you've got everything ready to go. So we're just going to save this file. So again, we're going to go to File and Save As. And I'm going to find my folder again. So again, I'm looking on my desktop. And on my desktop, I should be able to find my exam folder. And I can call this Survey. I'm just going to save it. Once that's saved, we can close it. We can go back to our exam and then we can click on our upload button. And then we'll be able to upload that file to complete the question. Once your file's uploaded, you can then click next.